G'day me again, so not a lot of voiceover in this one, but more a lot of my rude head talking to you guys and showing you how I make these slabs. So um, there is a whole heap of work just to get this beautiful timber pulled apart, and this is how you do it. Now, I'm not going to bore you with pulling nails out of pallets, but right at the end of the video, I've got a heap of little bonus tips, um, things that I've just figured out along the way just to make it life easier. Anyway... Get stuck into it. Hope you enjoy it. Alrighty, sticker sponsor shout out is Carl Pope Woodcraft. He's got a heap of great videos. He's an international and he's a pommy. He's a legend. Go and check him out. You big bastard. Alright, now using a metal detector I know is very exciting, but this is showing you that even though the nails are out, there is tiny shards of nail left in that are going to wreck your planer, your saw blades, and all that good stuff. Right, all right, what's going on here? So this is my new straightening jig. Yes, it is muted fuchsia, or hot pink, if you will. And yes, that's a uh, antenna off a rescue helicopter. That's a bit of nostalgia, but also it looks after my back because I'm not leaning over as much. Anyway, dig it. So I've now put a straight edge on all of this timber with my straightening jig and I'm loving the new routine that that has given me. Um, so uh, what it also, it may not look like, is I've actually sorted all the all this timber into its thicknesses and types of pallets. Um, that's making the process a little more seamless rather than the normal massive pile of wood I end up with on the other side of the table saw. So um, this will come into play more when I start using the thicknesser just to avoid that up and down up and down as I try and flatten all these off to make that nice gluing surface. Okay now that I have that one straight edge I can now run the rest through the table saw hopefully get two pieces of timber out of each slat if not I'll save those leftover bits uh, for another job. I mean look how rough and ready this timber is as it comes off the pallet and um, just stick with me and look how good it comes up. Stand by. Keep waiting. It's, it's coming and it, it's going to be gold. Trust me. And look at that timber. Ah, she's beautiful. Put a horn on a jellyfish. All right, what's up next? The very important job of mixing all the timber up and making it as random as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna make these about 20 centimeters wide uh, for two reasons. One is to not overload my thicknesser, which can take 330. And also I've now got the jointer, which is a nine inch jointer. I wanna start trialing, flattening those slabs or at least one side on that. Okay, so I've straightened, I've planed all these um, slats flat. Now this is something I never used to do. Um, so I wouldn't rely on the glue alone for the structure. Um, now I'm more just doing it to sort of up the game a little bit. So I'm gonna use Type Bond 3 on all of this slab work. Now in the past, I've just used a cheap PVA glue from Bunnings. It's about $28 for four liters. It's not the greatest glue, but it has been more than sufficient to make slabs in the past. If you go back and look at any of my previous videos, you'll notice I never used to plane them, just the dirty slat. I would use this cheap glue and that would be sufficient, knowing that I would build in heaps of other structure into the project. I wouldn't rely on this and it's, it's definitely no good for outdoor use, um, but it's a cheaper way to have a bit of a go. Okay, also now that I am using the Type 1, in the past I've been very guilty of using way too much glue. Just a thin smear, um, just so it covers the entire surface. Um, this stuff is super strong, so um, try not to waste it because it is expensive. 
Okay, just initially, don't over tighten these clamps. Just try and get this as flat as possible. Now, I took the extra time in straightening both edges, so it's actually pretty clean on both sides. Again, if you go back to my previous video, you'll see these things are all over the shop. Uh, the problem is, is then they've got to go through the thicknesser too many times. So spending more time on this now and the cleanup is going to save you on thickness of blades, which generally are the most expensive item to replace. Okay, so it'll be pretty flat. Just give it some love taps to get it nice and flat. And then you want to go ahead and clamp the absolute shit out of it or until you hear a little pop noise coming from somewhere in your body. Okay, then evenly tighten as you go. Having a look underneath, make sure that that um, slab is not starting to lift up. So if it stays nice and flat, then you've got a nice, nice even clamping pressure entirely along the slab. Okay, so these aren't the most highest quality clamps out there. They're just pipe clamps. Now, I buy a packet of these on eBay or Amazon. There's a link down below. They're about 40 bucks uh, for a packet of four. You then just go and buy yourself some threaded pipe or go buy some steel and get it threaded. And you can basically get yourself four pipe clamps uh, for under a hundred bucks, Aussie. And that'll just get you in the game of making slabs. So they're cheap, they do the job, um, and they just let you make cool stuff because as you all know, you can never have enough clamps. Groovy. Check that motion. I have done that a billion times. A billion. I'd say, check this piece out. It's got a big void here and the crack. Don't be scared of those, use them as well. Um, if you like to work with epoxy or even just a bit of filler, we'll fill those gaps in later from the top and it will just add to that sort of rustic charm. Alrighty, I'm now gonna flatten all my slabs. I'm gonna use a thicknesser. That what I did before I bought this was I just had a sled and a router and basically rigged up uh, a big board with some side rails and you basically i got a video I'll, I'll just show you it works like that i've um i've flattened off at least 80 of my projects before i decided to invest in one of these works great makes a lot of mess but it does a job and that's what it's all about All right, first time using the joint out for slabs for me. And because I did get these ones so flat, spent more time working on them before I glued them up, this thing really did a great job. So two passes and it's then ready to go into the thicknesser. Also, don't spend a lot of time um, getting all your slats the same length. So what's good about this is I know I'm gonna chop it off, but the beauty it is, is those ends can take a hit for the team. If you do get any snipe, which I am on this machine because I'm still getting used to it, and same on the thicknesser. So that's gonna get cut off, so it's gonna be all good anyway. All right, check square. Didn't see that coming, check square again. Okay, let's do this. We're about to joint for the first time. That's a beautiful thing. You're not gonna believe it. It's square. Giddy up. Okay, so really happy with how the jointer has worked for me. Um, I never would have had one. It was gifted to me and it is absolutely unreal. However, this is how I did it before doing that. In fact, that's the first time I've ever used it. So this is just a uh, straightening jig. I've gone with this toggle clamp method so it allows me to put these big slabs on it is my straight edge and that's going to give me my first um, cut i can then run it through nice and parallel so cost about 20 bucks to make and it is it works a charm okay so just quickly reason for using the jointer or the table saw sled to get that first straight edge is often the clamps will actually pull uh, the boards out of square so you'll hold a square up to them and they'll be completely wonky depending on how thick is the timber you're using so that again 
gives you your first straight edge so we can then cut nice parallel cuts and then that is going to let me use these slabs like bricks so they all go together nice and square and uh, make a nice clean tabletop. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it. That's how I now do it. Um, there's lots of those other little tips in on how I used to do it or how you can get yourself some of these slabs with very minimal tools. Um, like I said, it's been a long time coming to get it to this stage, but a bit of hard yakka and you can clean up this beautiful pallet wood uh, just fine. Alrighty, so um, when you get people say, yeah, but it's only pallet wood and you get it for free, you can show them this video or one of your own to show them how much work goes into making some beautiful slabs of timber like this. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's definitely worth it. Oh, I might just throw in some bonus footage. I'm now gonna chop these up into bricks. So the brick work um, method is what I use in a lot of my slabs. It's super strong and looks really cool. All right, thank you. Alrighty, so that's that. That's how I make slabs. Um, unlucky for me, I've not made enough. So I've pretty much got to do that whole routine again by about a third so that I can get stuck into this little hallway table, which will be the next video. Okay, another tip to save your arms and your elbows, get yourself a decent size crowbar uh, with your lead to hook those nails out. A lot of these nails are threaded and they can be quite hard and you probably end up just bending your old hammer. So the old big crow bar makes very light work of it and you're not gonna end up with a buggered elbow at the end of the day. Alrighty, here's another tip. There goes the head of the nail, because it's so rusted. There goes another one. You really want this piece of wood, you gotta get these nails out. Again, these things can help you just to pinch it. That one didn't work. Just to pinch it and pull the nail out that way. You also notice that this timber is being left out in the rain. It's quite wet. Uh, that's another way to get your nails out and then you can just set it aside to dry. Okay, quick tip. Get yourself a pair of these pliers. So for these very crappy little nails. I know they're gonna bend over and be a bastard to pull out. So I merely just clip them off. And then that makes them far quicker just to tap out and get them out in one go. Old screwdriver, not a bad little tip either, just to straighten them up so you can get your hammer underneath. Okay, just another quick tip. Make sure the nail that you're removing is right near the edge of a nice solid surface. Okay? You don't want to be working back here, the paling bouncing around. It's much easier on the arm if you're doing this for a good hour. If they come out with not a lot, if they come out with not a lot of effort at all. Okay, so if you've actually made it this far, you deserve an extra thank you. So, thank you. And um, if you feel like subscribing, that'd be awesome. Really helps out the channel. If not, that's all good. But uh, really appreciate you watching. Stay tuned. Catch you later.